Hey everyone, I have been asked on my Instagram several times for how to build a glass railing video. I have now built this railing four different times and documented it on my stories in renovations and this one is at my best friend's home. The results are beautiful and it's really not that hard. Just take your time and most people who are confident with power tools are going to be able to get this result. Today's sponsor is Craftman Power Tools. I am wearing a DeWalt t-shirt. But you need to understand that Craftsman is now owned by DeWalt and it's kind of like their DIY little sister. They're great quality of tools for the homeowner and DIY enthusiasts at a very reasonable price. All right, let's get into it. Each railing has completely different dimensions, so there's no way that I can actually tell you exactly what glass to order, but you're about to get the rough idea on how to size out your railing properly. The top and bottom plates I ordered are one and a half inches thick by three inches wide, and the posts are true three by threes. They were milled by East Coast Specialty Hardwoods. Next up is a demonstration on what I did to get the measurements. 98 inches of top and bottom rail, I think that two inches of glass will look best. You're gonna have a post at each end and then one in the center, three inches wide each, so that's nine in total. Then you take your 98 inches of top and bottom rail minus the nine inches of post, and you get 89 inches. You'll then divide that 89 inches into two pieces of glass. So now you know that your two pieces of glass are 44 and a half inches wide each. Once you have cut your top and bottom plates to length, then you need to cut a relief cut down the center where your glass will sit. Your local mill shop will do this for you, but I wanted to show you how to do it yourself and save some money. I wanted to inset the glass three quarters of an inch into the wood, so I raised the blade on my table saw three quarters of an inch. Then you need to find the center of your wood and set your fence accordingly. My glass is just barely under one quarter of an inch thick, so I cut one eighth on one side of the center and then one eighth on the other side. AKA, I set my fence to one and three eighths and just moved it over a saw kerf each cut. Repeat this on all of the top and bottom plates. I didn't cut the length of the smaller pieces of the railing yet, so I do suggest doing this first and then cutting them to length if you have smaller pieces like I do coming up. Cut your three by three posts to the height of your glass. My glass is 38 inches high, but again, you have to do some of the math to figure out your post height because you have to take into consideration your top and bottom plate and whether they're going to butt into the post or if you've chosen to run them the full length under. Then you also have to think about how much you set your glass into the top and bottom plate. My best advice is to draw it out. There's no right way to do this. It depends on your design, but take your time, draw it out a few times, and you'll be fine. Before I installed the railings and post, I used my multi-tool to cut out the existing baseboard because the posts I'm installing are larger than the previous. This tool makes it so much easier than taking the baseboard off and then cutting it to a new length and then reattaching. It's probably one of the most underrated tools you need for renovations. Okay, you have your posts and your rails cut out and they're ready to go. Your relief cuts have been made and you have tested the glass to fit. Please test the glass to fit. Now you need to attach it all together. I use construction grade adhesive on every joint and I screwed from the bottom up where the plate will be because then it's hidden when I tip the railing upright. Double check your measurements every time you attach a new piece. They aren't joking when they say you need to measure twice and cut once. You do not want to have to take this apart once the adhesive has set. I left it to sit for about an hour or so, and then when I stood it up in place, I made sure to put construction adhesive underneath the bottom rail so that it would adhere to the floor. Once the railing was where I wanted it to be, I screwed it in place and I used four inch GRK screws with a really small head on them for easy hiding. You can use whatever screws you like, now that it's done because as long as your screws are inside the relief cuts you're not going to see the heads of them the glass completely hides it so now it's time for glass i dry fit it all at first just to make sure and once it does fit i put a bead of flexible clear adhesive in the relief cuts and then set the glass inside I did the same with the top rail and i added adhesive to the tops of the posts where they met the top rail as well you might need a second hand for this. 
Then I use the same small head GRK screws to screw the top railing onto the posts and then filled them with wood fill. The smaller the head on the screw, the better it looks wood filled, in my opinion. I absolutely love this railing because to me, it seems easier than adding in spindles and making sure that each one is plumb, each one is spaced properly. Just add a large piece of glass as long as your measurements are good and it goes together so simply. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked it. I hope you found it easy. Don't forget to subscribe. I have a lot of cool content coming up in the new year. Happy DIYing.